boy oh boy i did not think all of that was <laughs> underneath all of this i had no idea what i was about to discover hello and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new my name is rachel and today i'm going to be doing a little bit of an update on the 75 hard style challenge this is a challenge that i started Ooh, about mid-February. If you haven't heard of it, the 75 Hard Style Challenge was started by Mandy Lee. Her TikTok name, I believe, is Old Loser in Brooklyn. Basically, she set forth at the beginning of the year to complete the style challenge, which involved wearing the things that she already had, taking pictures of her outfits every day, not purchasing things, keeping her closet organized, all in an attempt to kind of be more creative in her own closet, save a little bit of money, and kind of just learn her style a little bit better. So I started this challenge a couple months ago and I think it's time for an update. Some of my personal goals for the challenge were to be a little bit more playful in my wardrobe, play around with color and silhouette, and just trust my gut when it comes to getting dressed in the morning. So I just thought it was time to do a little bit of an update, let you guys know how the challenge is going so far and share with you some of my thoughts because I've got them. <laughs> I definitely have some thoughts. This challenge has been so much more thought provoking than I ever thought that it would be. Honestly, I thought that I was just gonna have a little bit of fun, be creative, take a little shopping break, play with color, those kinds of things, but I've actually ended up learning a lot. So anyways, let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, immediately after I started the challenge, we got sick. My whole family got sick, me, my husband, all of our kids. And so the first week of outfits, I'd say looked something like this. They all looked something like this. You're supposed to get dressed every day and this was me getting dressed, I guess. So the start was a bit rocky, but after our sickness cleared up and I was able to get back into the swing of things, I started to actually put outfits together. And this is where things got interesting. The first thing that I noticed is that it was way more difficult than I expected to dress colorfully. It was way more difficult than I expected. So much of my clothing is casual. And even I would say that the pops of color that I have, like this shirt, for instance, they, they still fall in the relatively casual category. This is just a simple cotton top. There should be no reason why I couldn't wear this top instead of any of the other t-shirts that I have in the day to day. Yet, no matter how hard I tried, no matter how many times I put together colorful outfits, half the time I would end up taking them off because they didn't feel like me and they didn't feel like they suited the day. They didn't feel like they suited what I was about to do, whether that was hanging around our neighborhood and going for walks and playing in the park or going to the grocery store. It just, I felt the best way I can describe it is that I felt fraudulent, that <laughs> the colorful outfits felt fraudulent. And this piqued my interest. This piqued my interest because I love color. My Pinterest boards are littered with pops of color. And especially when it comes to interior design, I love a bright, airy space and playing with pops of color in that instance. And I also love cozy, moody, deep colors as well. But for some reason, it wasn't translating. It wasn't translating to my day-to-day -day life. As much as I liked color in my head, I couldn't seem to wear it. Again, I would try, I would put together outfits and then I would immediately take them off because they didn't feel like me. So the first thing that I discovered is that I am way more mechanistic and routine in my dressing, <laughs> in the dressing of myself than I originally thought that I was. More often than not, I prioritize comfort and I gravitate toward pieces that are unfussy and fabrics that are gonna be really durable and easy and, and then I'm not gonna worry too much about getting stained or messed up. I don't like my clothes to be precious. So that was the first thing that I noticed. And how this relates to color is that the majority of my pieces that I would consider not precious, unfussy, all of those things just happen to not be bright pops of color. They're a navy jumpsuit, a black pair of overalls, my jeans, all of those things just happen to fall in a more neutral category. Another thing that I noticed in myself is this mentality about saving particular pieces of clothing for special occasions. What are these special occasions? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Y'all, the desire to save clothing for a particular occasion in the future is deeply ingrained in me. I discovered this after like day 30, where I had this like accumulation of pictures going in my phone that I could see, okay, my clothing choices are incredibly casual. 
incredibly casual, far into the spectrum. I would rather look like a bit of a bum than be overdressed any day of the week. And by bum, I mean like beach bum. And it didn't really seem to matter how much I paid for an item of clothing in the past. That wasn't how I judged whether or not it was meant to be saved for these elusive special occasions in the future. It just came down to how I categorized them in my head. So a shirt like this, which is actually made of a very casual material, it has a slightly more elevated cut, I suppose, because there's some embroidery or I don't know what you would call this holes, floral holes. I don't know, but in my mind, it does not exist in the casual category. I thrifted this item. It cost me maybe $5, probably less. And yet I found myself saving it. This piece and many, many others like it. In the day-to-day, -day, I would always find myself wanting to wear a t-shirt, denim shorts, overalls, casual jumpsuits. That's what I would gravitate towards. So it was a struggle. I found myself struggling to wear pops of color and to wear this 60% of my wardrobe that I felt like needed to be saved for future occasions. And so I started to think, what's going on here? Because it wasn't as though I was dying to wear color. Actually, let me rephrase. It wasn't as though I would put on the colorful outfits and think, oh, I'm just longing to wear this, but I can't for X, Y, and Z reason. Again, I would put them on, I would put the outfit on that either contained some piece of clothing that felt a little fancier or was extra colorful. And I wouldn't feel like myself. I wouldn't feel like myself and I wouldn't, I didn't want to wear it. It wasn't as though I wanted to and felt held back. I actually found in myself this feeling, I don't want to wear this. So I would take it off and I would change into the thing that I wanted to wear because I don't think that the heart of the challenge is to force yourself to wear things that you don't want to wear. I think the heart of the challenge is to play and to find your own style. And it was like that was happening, but the results were different than I was expecting. So what do I think is going on here? What do I think was going on? I think there's a couple of things at play. First of all, lifestyle. I'm a mom, three young kids, and I live a very home-centered life. And so where I imagine myself wearing certain outfits or rather how I might dress for an out of house occasion. And by that, I don't mean like the grocery store, or the post office. I mean like going to a friend's birthday party, going out on a date, going to church, those types of things. For those instances, I have a certain style, a certain style that I enjoy wearing. But for my home life, my style is different. And what I've been learning over these past few months is that both can be true. It's not either or, it's both and. I have my home life mom-centric style, which is 100% me, and I have my slightly more festive <laughs> occasion wear, which is also me. What I might wear as a wedding guest is fully me, but it is also completely different than what I'm gonna want to wear on a Tuesday morning. And there's room for both. There's room for both. And so I think what I envisioned with this 75 hard style challenge is that I was gonna be wedding guest Rachel all the time, but that's not what happened. I don't want to be wedding guest Rachel all the time. <laughs> and for me, I think what I realized is that the place that I enjoy playing with color, being quirky and having fun with my style is really for the out and about type of occasions. I love going to a friend's house for a dinner party or celebrating someone's birthday, or again, maybe going to someone's wedding. And in those occasions, playing with color. I'm not an LBD type of gal. You're not gonna find me in a little black dress unless it has something very quirky and fun about it, whether that's an interesting silhouette or an accent sleeve or something like that. I like to have fun with my occasion wear, whether that's playing with silhouette or playing with color. And occasion wear can include more casual occasions like date nights. It can be a regular occurrence, but it's not my day-to-day -day life. In my day-to-day -day life, I like to feel comfortable and cool and effortless and I like to not be thinking about my clothing too much. And honestly, this style challenge made me think about my clothes a lot more than I typically would. 
and I liked it and I didn't like it. I enjoy being routine in my clothing for my day-to-day -day life. I like not thinking about things. I like just having a couple of bottoms and a few tops that can all kind of be paired together and are just easy. I like to be easy going in my life and I'm not gonna be walking through the neighborhood with my kids in a bright red dress. It's just not where I feel comfortable. It doesn't make me feel like myself. So that was a huge discovery for me. It's not that the pops of color that I was drawn to are inauthentic for me. It's just they don't necessarily fit in my everyday life. They're occasion specific. Another huge revelation for me has to do with the idea of the fantasy self. Now for me, I always used to think that the fantasy self related to being fancier, for lack of a better word, fancier than you actually are. Imagining that your life is fancier than it is. So for instance, when I think about the fantasy self, when I thought about the fantasy self in the past, or when I would hear someone describe the concept, they would always be describing someone who imagined that they were always going to these parties and soirees and they had a you know, a closet full of party dresses, but they didn't actually ever go out. Or I might've heard the fantasy self described as someone who was really into like city life and boss babe energy, and they have a closet full of blazers, but they work from home and you know, they wear sweatpants all day. And so I always imagined the fantasy self being something that was more elevated than the actual self, that the style of the fantasy self was something that had to be more elevated than the style of the individual in question. So when I was planning for the 75 hard style challenge and I was kind of glancing through my Pinterest board, I thought, okay, I can wear more color, this should work because all of the outfits, the majority of the outfits that I have pinned are incredibly casual, incredibly casual. A lot of what I have pinned are these kind of artsy Brooklynite <laughs> type of situations, jeans and clogs and cool jackets and pops of color. And you know, I think you get the idea. I'll throw up some pictures. You'll see what I mean. Y'all, y'all. When I went back to my Pinterest board to try to pull some pictures that illustrated the pops of color, I could not find them. I could not find them. There's so much less color in my Pinterest boards than I originally thought. I think because I was interested in adding in more color to my wardrobe, it kind of caused me to hyperfixate on the pops of color that are present in my Pinterest board. Because when I actually take a step back and I'm looking at all of the pictures as a whole, yes, there's some color, but overall, I'd say that 80% of the outfits are incredibly neutral, incredibly casual, relaxed. There's lots of denim, there's lots of white and beige and brown, neutral shades of green and blue and then some pops of primary colors, but they're not the main thing. They're not even close to the main thing. What is going on? What is going on with my brain? But I definitely had it in my mind that there was a whole lot more color on my Pinterest board than there actually is. It's funny, because I actually looking at my Pinterest board now, I realize that it's pretty true to the state of my closet, like the percentages the ratios that I find in the Pinterest board of neutrals to pops of color are reflected in my wardrobe. Anyways, I'm gonna let video me continue, but this is just a strange revelation and I don't know exactly what happened here. My brain did a weird thing. But they're casual. They're lived in, cool and edgy and relaxed and, and all that. And so I thought, I don't know, I just didn't have any idea. Yeah, it just all felt completely, it all felt completely reasonable to me because the pins on my Pinterest board are incredibly casual. So, but what I learned through the course of this challenge is that the fantasy self has nothing to do with fanciness. It has nothing to do with the elevatedness of your style. And again, that idea that I had was completely subconscious. I didn't know that I was thinking that. I mean, until I found myself in the middle of this challenge, being completely unable <laughs> to wear the type of outfits that I had pinned. Again, they felt fraudulent. I felt fraudulent. My Pinterest board doesn't reflect the fantasy of a night owl who goes out to all these incredible parties on the weekends. However, I found that it is fantastical. <laughs> my Pinterest board, the thing that I was kind of dreaming up in terms of what I was challenging myself to do in this 
75 days was based on a fantasy. It was based on a fantasy. And again, the fantasy was not of elevated parties and late night after work drinks. The fantasy was of an interesting life. This person who maybe they're an artist, maybe they're an intellectual, they think big thoughts and do big things and they live an interesting life. The people and outfits that I was pinning, that I had pinned in the past, remind me and evoke something in me of this concept, this fantasy of a person that lives an interesting life. And for better or for worse, probably for worse, I had placed so many subconscious value judgments about those people and about the worth of their life. And unbeknownst to me, <laughs> unbeknownst to my conscious self, I was attempting to have that. We're about to get a little bit heady here, but somewhere deep, deep down, I was believing that if I dressed that way, if I had a quirky sense of style and I dressed playfully and I embodied the style of these people that I was pinning, I would somehow be adding value to my own life. And not the kind of value that is added by dressing in a way that you wanna dress, by dressing in a way that reflects who you are, not that kind of value, because I do think that getting dressed is valuable and those things are valuable in and of themselves. But subconsciously, I thought that if I could dress like someone who had an interesting life, then my life would be more interesting and valuable as a result. I wanted to dress that way because of what it represented to me. The, the value of the life that these people, this fantasy, this fantasy person, the value of the life that they lived. Traveling to interesting places, making interesting art, having dinner with interesting people. I somehow thought that if I dressed that way, like a quirky artist, though incredibly casual, <laughs> that I would somehow become more interesting, that my life would somehow take on more value. I wanted to dress that way because of what it represented. And this became blatantly obvious as I chose again and again not to wear the things that I had pinned because I didn't want to wear those outfits. I wanted to have that person's life. I wanted to have a more valuable life by being the type of person who would wear X, Y, and Z thing. I would put on a colorful outfit and I just felt horrible. I felt horrible, I felt incredibly awkward, like a baby giraffe, like stumbling around. I mean, I wore some of those outfits throughout the day and I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? This isn't me, this isn't what I wanna be wearing. What's going on here? And I realized I was trying to fit a square peg into a round hole because of the value that I thought it would bring to my life. And not in my own mind, but in the perception of others. I wanted to be perceived as an interesting person with a valuable life. There's a difference between saying, I find value by dressing a certain way and saying, dressing a certain way makes me more valuable. I'll say that one more time. There's a difference between saying, I find value in dressing a certain way and saying that dressing a certain way makes me more valuable. It's okay to play with color and have a fun quirky closet if it brings value to my life. But the way that I dress is not what makes my life valuable. It's not what makes my life interesting. My life is interesting and valuable because it's mine. I chose it. It's full of the people and the things that I love. Whether I consider my life valuable and interesting is a decision that I make. It's up to me to decide if I feel like my life is valuable, just as it is, as mundane and messy as it is, as home-centric as it is, I get to decide if it's valuable and it doesn't really matter what it looks like to anyone else. That really came up for me during this challenge. That realization that I was 100% pinning for the approval of others. <laughs> the idea that I could wear a shirt that 
would somehow make me seem more interesting to other people around me and therefore add value to my life. It sounds pretty silly when I say it out loud and it, it might sound absolutely ridiculous to you, but that's what I discovered. That's what I discovered as I was getting dressed through this challenge. I don't wanna wear pops of color in my day-to-day -day life. I don't wanna always dress quirky and playful and artistic. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And the value of my life doesn't rise and fall depending on what I feel like wearing that day. I can spend my weekends going to art galleries and traveling and having deep conversations or I can spend my weekends hanging out in the living room and building pillow forts and tidying my house for the 50th time that day and the value of my life doesn't change. Neither of those things can change the value of my life and the value isn't tethered to my fashion choices or my fashion purchases. I can just wear what I wanna wear, but just unearthing that, letting that kind of come to the surface, it kind of took some of the pressure off. It took some of the pressure off. Getting dressed doesn't need to be that big of a deal. And so I've kind of removed some of those goals that I originally had. Dressing more playful, adding more pops of color, kind of put those on the back burner. They're there. If I wanna do that, I can do that. And I'm kind of just focusing on the one goal, which is trusting myself, going with my gut, letting getting dressed be this kind of intuitive thing. When I was a kid, it was intuitive. It was low stakes. As a kid, you change your outfit probably five or six, seven times a day. It's low stakes. Put on something in the morning, by the afternoon you're wearing something different. It's fun. It's for fun. Getting dressed is for fun. I think this challenge really taught me that I was putting a lot of pressure on the things that I was choosing to wear, a lot of pressure on my style, as if it was going to inherently change my own value and the value of my life. I was putting so much pressure, pressure that isn't meant to be there, expectations that are ill-fitting. Clothes can't do that. Clothes can't actually change how you are and what you are. They can change how things seem to be, I could dress in a character and I could seem to be different than I am, but I would still be who I actually am deep, deep down, right? I was putting so much pressure on the clothes that I wear and it was making the act of getting dressed in the morning just not fun, <laughs> not enjoyable. I think in large part, that's why I lean into so much routine and mechanistic dressing is because it's too much pressure. It's too much to think about. I can't think about how I seem to the world right now just gotta get dressed, throw it on, you know? It's pressure that was never meant to be on clothes, I don't think. It's pressure that I don't wanna have on clothes and style. I wanna do it for the joy. And I think it's okay if I'm not always perfectly reflecting who I am to everyone around me. Who I am is safe, it's encased, it's protected. Again, it's not tethered to what I wear. I just get to express myself in what I wear. Sometimes it will be reflective and sometimes it won't. Boy, oh boy, I did not think all of that was <laughs> underneath all of this. I had no idea what I was about to discover. Nah, nah, nah. Your life is good no matter what you wear. My life is good no matter what I wear. It's just extra. It's just icing on the cake. We get to get dressed in the morning. We get to have fun with our clothes. We don't have to get it right. It's not a thing you can get right. It's for the joy.